All right, Squire? Mm, hello. Yeah. Your wife. She a colour. Aye, aye, know what I mean, know what I mean, aye, know what I mean, say no more. Uh, I beg your pardon? Your wife. Does she, uh, you know, does she go, aye, aye, uh, nudge, nudge? Well, she sometimes goes, Oh, I yes. bet she does, oh, I bet she does, know what I mean, know what I mean, nudge, nudge. Uh, sorry, I, I don't think I follow you. Follow me, follow me. I like that, that's good, that is, I like that. A nod's as good as a wink to a blind bat, eh? Eh, hey, nudge, nudge? Uh, are you trying to sell me something? Selling, selling, very good, very good. Oh, oh, you're wicked, eh? Wicked, eh? Oh, oh, say no more, say no more. Know what I mean, nudge, nudge? Hey, <laughs> hey, your wife, she a sport, eh? Uh, well, she likes sport, yes. I bet she does, I bet she does. She's she's very fond of cricket, as a matter of fact. Who isn't, eh? Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Likes games, likes games. Knew she would, knew she would, knew she would. She's been around, eh? She's been around. Uh, yeah, she travelled. She's from Purley. Oh, say no more, say no more. Purley? Oh, say no more, say no more. Purley? Oh, say no more. Your wife, though, she, uh, you know, she interested in... Photographs, eh? Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Say no more, say no more. He asked him knowingly. Photography. Eh? Eh? Nudge, 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 nudge. Wink, wink. Say no more. What, like holiday snaps? Could be, could be, could be taken on holiday, yeah, could be. Swimming, you know, swimming costumes, candid photography. Know what I mean? Eh? Nudge, nudge. No, no, we don't own a camera. Ah. Oh. Still, eh? Four, eh? Four! Hey, hey, say no more! Look, are you insinuating something? Ah, 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 yes. Well? Oh, I mean. You're a man of the world, aren't you? I mean, you've, you know, you've been around, you know, you've been there, haven't you? Uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you've. I mean, you've done it, you know, with a lady. Yes. What's it like? what it was like for a time lord to travel with a female companion, Hey, eh? Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Nudge, nudge, say no more! Vocational Guidance Counselor! Vocational Guidance Counselor! Vocational Guidance Counselor! Vocational Guidance Counselor! Ah! Well, Mr. Tompkins. Huh? Please, do sit down. Oh, thank you, thank you. Let's take the weight off the old feet, eh? Mm, yes. And lovely weather for this time of year, I must say. Enough of this gay banner. Now, Mr. Tompkins, you asked us for advice as to which job in life is best suited for you. Oh, that is correct, yes. Well, I have here the interviews and the aptitude test you took last week, and from them, we build up a pretty clear picture of the sort of person that you are, and I think I can say without fear of contradiction that the ideal job for you is chartered accountancy. Oh, but I am a chartered accountant. Very well then, back to the office with you then. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, no, 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 you don't understand. I've been a chartered accountant for the last 20 years. I want a new job, something exciting that will let me live. Well, chartered accountancy is quite exciting, isn't it? Exciting? No, it's not. It's dull, 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 dull. My God, it's dull. It's so desperately dull and tedious and stuffy and boring and desperately dull. Yes, yes, Mr. Tompkins. Uh, but you see, your report here says that you are an extremely dull person. Uh, our experts describe you as an appallingly dull fellow. Unimaginative. Uh, timid, lacking in initiative, spineless even, easily dominated, no sense of humor, tedious company, and irrepressibly drab. Whereas in most professions, these would be considered considerable drawbacks, uh, but in chartered accountancy, they are a positive boon. Oh, but you see, I came here to find a new job, a, a new meaning to my existence. I mean, can't you help me? 
Well, do you have any idea of what you want to do? Oh, oh yes, yes I have. What? Lion timing. Of course, it's a bit of a jump, isn't it? I mean, chartered accountancy to lion taming in one go. You don't think it might be better to work your way up to lion taming, say, via banking? Oh, no, 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 I don't want to wait for nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I want to be in my taming on. Quite, quite. Do you have any qualifications? Oh, yes. I've got another hat. A uh, hat? Yes, a lion taming hat. A hat with lion tamer written on it. I got it at Harrods. It lights up and says lion tamer in great big neon letters so you can tame them after dark, you know, and they're stroppy. I see. I see. And, and you can claim reasonable wear and tear by switching it off in the daytime. And claim reasonable wear and tear and allows professional expenses under paragraph 275. Yeah, yes. Um, I do follow. The s snag is that if I now call Mr. Meatloaf and say to him, uh, uh, Look here, I've got a 45-year-old chartered account with me who wants to become a lion tamer. His first question is not going to be, Does he have his old hat? He's going to ask what kind of experience you've had with lions. Well, I've seen him at the zoo. Good. Oh. Good. Oh, the little brown stumpy things with short legs and long brown noses. I don't know what all the fuss is about. I could take one of those. They're pretty tight to start with. And these lions, how tall are they? Oh, well, about so high, you know. They don't frighten me at all. Really? And do these lions eat ants? Oh, yes, 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 that's right. Well, Mr. Tompkins... I'm afraid what you've got hold of there is an ant eater. A what? An ant eater. Not a lion. You see, a lion is a huge, savage beast about five feet tall and ten feet long, weighing about 400 pounds, running 40 miles per hour, with massive, sharp, pointy teeth and long, nasty claws that will rip your belly open before you can say Charlie Banani and they look like this oh, oh. oh. now should I call Mr. Meatloaf? Oh, no, uh, no, 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 I think your idea of making a transition into lion taming via easier stages, say by insurance or, um, uh, oh. Banking? But, 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 oh, banking, yes, banking, yes, yes, mm -hmm. banking, now that's a man's life, isn't it? Yes, banking, yes, travel, excitement, thrills, decisions affecting people's lives. Only good. Should I put you in touch with the bank then? Oh uh, yes, yes. Oh no, 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 no. Look, it's a big, it's a big decision. I'd, I'd like a couple of weeks to think about it. You know, don't want to jump into it too quickly. Maybe three weeks. I've got, I've got it. Oh, definitely. You know, uh, if it's right for me, you know, I've got a few weeks to go. Then maybe. Well, this is just one of those all too many cases oh, you know, in our books of chartered accountancy, yeah, you know, where the only way we can fight this terribly banking, debilitating okay. social disease right. is by informing the general public of its consequences by showing young people that it's just not worth. It. So, please give generously to this address. The League for Fighting Chartered Accountancy, 55 Lincoln House, Basil Street, London, SW3. Right, let's have a look at you. Where's the rest of you? Not, Not here. here. Not here. I can see that. Why aren't they here? Don't, Don't know. know. Perhaps they got COVID? 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 They've been around too many flowers. Right, now, self defense. Right, I'll be carrying on from last week, where I showed you how to defend yourself against anyone who attacks you with a bunch of fresh flowers. Uh, you promised you wouldn't do flowers this week. What? We've done it for nine weeks. Well, what's wrong with flowers, eh? Can't we do something else for a change? Like, what if someone attacks you with a pointed stick? Pointed sticks? Oh, we want to learn how to defend ourselves against pointed sticks, do we? Getting all I am out here. Eh? Fresh flowers not good enough for you, eh? Oh, well, I'll tell you something for nothing, lad. When you're walking up tonight and some homicidal maniac attacks you with a bunch of dahlias, don't come crying to me. Right, we're buttercup. 
when your assailant lunges at you with a buttercup, thusly. We've done, we've the, done, we've done, butter done the buttercup. We've done the buttercup. We've done tulips, we've done daisies, chrysanthemums. Roses, carnations. Orchids, cornflowers. Azaleas, buttercups. Asters. Geraniums? And marigolds in bloom. Lilies? We've, we've done, done them! Done them. Both, both kinds? Yeah. Yep. All right then. Poppies. Ah, we haven't done them now, have we? Yes, right. Poppies. Now, how to defend yourself against a man armed with a poppy? Here, you take this. Yeah. Now, it's quite simple. To defend yourself against a poppy fiend, first of all, you force him to drop the poppy. Next, you eat the poppy. Thus disarming him, you've now rendered him helpless. Suppose he's got a bunch. Shut up. Suppose he's got a pointed stick. Shut up. Right, now you, Mr. Iris. Harrison. Right, Mr. Harrison, yeah, whatever. Come on, come at me with that poppy. Yeah, come on, come on, attack me with it. How does you like? Come on. No, 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 no. Put some effort into it. Put some effort into it, for Christ's sake. Hold it up like that and scream. Uh, now, come on, come on, attack me. Come on, uh, come on. <laughs> now, now I eat the poppy. Have you shot him? He's dead. He's completely dead. I've now eaten the poppy, but the deceased of Mr. Iris is now disarmed. You shot him! You shot him dead! Well, he was attacking me with a poppy! You told him to! Look, I'm only doing my job! I have to show you how to defend yourself against fresh flowers! And pointed sticks! Shut up! Supposing someone had a poppy, and you hadn't got a gun? Run for it! Well, you could stand and scream for help. Yeah, you try and do that with a sunflower down your windpipe. A sunflower? Where? Nah, I was just saying oh. sunflower. Oh. I thought my number was up there. On the sunflower? Oh, where? I was just repeating. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, right. Oh, well, that's the poppy. Right, then, right. Next to in there. Armless looking thing, isn't it, yeah? Yo, Mr. Ryerson. Thompson. Oh, yeah, Mr. Thompson. Come at me with this lavender. Come on, come on, be as vicious as you like with it. No. Yeah, why not? You'll shoot me. I won't. You shot Mr. Harrison? Oh, that was self-defence. Come on, I promise I won't shoot you. You promised to tell us about pointed sticks. Oh, shut up. Now, come on, brandish that lavender. Come on, as vicious as you like. Come on. No, throw the gun away. I haven't got a gun. Yes, you have. I haven't. You have. You shot Mr. Harrison with it. Oh, that gun. Throw it away. All right, all right. Out and defend yourself against lavender without a gun. You were going to shoot me. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. You were. No, no, I wasn't, I wasn't. Now, come on, come on, you worm. Come on, come on, you miserable little man. Come on, do your worst, you worm. Ah! If anyone ever attacks you while lavender, simply pull the lever and a 16-ton weight will fall on his head. I will, that in Leeds. Suppose you haven't got a 16-ton weight. Oh, well, that's planning, isn't it, eh? Forethought. Well, how many 16-ton weights are there? Well, look, smarty pants, the 16 ton weight is just one way, just one way of killing a lavender killer. There are millions. Like what? Shoot him. Well, suppose you haven't got a gun or a 16 ton weight. All right, clever dick. You two, come at me with lavender. Yeah, yeah. Or a basket of them each. Come, come, come at me, them. Come at me. No gun? No. No 16 ton weight? No. No pointed stick? Shut up. No rocks in the ceiling? No. You won't kill us? I won't. You promise? I promise I won't kill you. Now come on, attack me. Come on. All right. All right. Right, now don't rush me this time. I'm going to turn me back so you can stalk me, right? Come at, at as quietly as you can. Right, up close behind me. Then in with the lavender, right? Okay, start moving. Now the first thing you have to do when you're being stalked by uh, a lavender killer is release the tiger. <laughs> Uh, the great advantage of the tiger in unarmed combat is that not only does he eat the lavender laid and four, but he also eats the lavender. Yes. The tiger, however, does not relish the hibiscus. The hibiscus assailant should be attacked with a crocodile. Right, now, the rest of you. I know you're there, working under the floorboards, with your pansies and your wet your beds, hiding behind the walls with your jasmine. Well, I'm ready for you. I'll wired myself up to 200 towns of gelatine, and if any of us try to try anything with me, well, we'll all go up together. Right, that's it. 
I've warmed you all. Boulder, Boulder, your tea's getting cold. Oh, come in, dear. Hello kiddies, hello it is I, Marvin Lillywhite, come to give you another magical tale. That's right, as told by myself, Marvin Lillywhite. So are we ready? Eh? Yes, let's go. One day, Gavin, the magic pixie, went to visit Daisy Bumble in her tumble-down cottage. He found her in the bedroom. Roughly, he grabbed her shoulders, pulling her onto the bed and ripping off her... Uh, Uh, uh. Old Gavin, the sea captain, was a rough, tough, jolly sort of fellow. He loved life on the sea and hanging out by the pier where the men dressed as ladies. Oh. No. Yeah, really? What, in South End? Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rumpel Gavin Tweezer ran the dinky twinky shop in the magic oak tree by the wobbly dum dum bush in the shade of the magic glade down in Dingley Dell. There he saw contraceptives. No, no. Disciplined. Naked. With a melon. off tonight with the cinema. Good evening. We are joined by one of the most prolific actors of his age, or indeed any age, Sebastian Fortescue. Back by popular demand for a new run of his best work at a national film theater. We are very fortunate to have him with us this evening. Good evening. Good evening, Sebastian. Uh, you don't mind if I call you Sebastian, right? Oh no, not at all. Only, it, like, it does worry some people, I don't know why, but perhaps they're a little sensitive. So I do ask these just on occasion, you know. No, 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 no. that's fine, that's fine. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, Sebastian's all right. Splendid. Uh, sorry to have it brought it up. It's only just that some people just really get, like, bothered by it. No, 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 no. Sebastian, it is. Hey, well, thank you. Thank you very much for being so helpful. Uh, only it's just, it's not, it's more my job's worth, really. Quite. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, silly, silly point. So silly. It, it does seem to matter. Uh, still, the less said, the better. Um, Seb, when you first started in theater, um, you don't mind if I uh, call you Seb, oh, right? No, 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 no. Everyone calls me Seb. Yes, it, it is shorter. Yeah, yes, um, it is, yes. Uh, Seb. A much less former, so. Yeah, uh, Seb, Sebastian, uh, anything. Splendid, splendid. Incidentally, do call me Tom. None of this Thomas nonsense. Now, um, where were we? Oh, oh yes, Sebby baby. Uh, when you I'm first sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't like being called Sebby baby. I'm sorry? I don't like being called Sebby baby. Mm, I didn't? Did I call you Sebby Baby? You, you I, did, yes. Now get on with um, it. No, I don't think I did. Uh, you did. Did I call him Sebby Baby? Did I really, sweetie? Don't call me sweetie. May I call you Sugar Plum? No. No. Pussycat? Angel Drawer? No, you may not. Now get on with it. Gavin? What? May I call you Gavin? Why Gavin? Well, it's a nice name. Chris Pratt does have a hedgehog named Gavin. Now, Gavin. Uh, that's what's a going on? What's going on? Little Gavi poo. Gavi with a little Gavi knickers. No, so no, I'm leaving. I'm off. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Tell us, tell us about your latest film, Sebastian. What? Tell us about your latest film. If you'd be so kind. Sebastian. None of this pussycat nonsense. Ramis, please tell us more. My latest film? Yes, Sebastian. Well, 
The idea, funnily enough, came when I first began acting back in 1992. Of course, in those days, I was only a child actor. Mm. Shut up! The stuff of history is indeed woven in the woof. Pearl Harbor. There are pages in history which are written on the grand scale. Events so momentous that they dwarf man and time alike. And such is the Battle of Pearl Harbor, reenacted for us now by the women of the Twitch Time Lords Women's Guild. Plague Doctor Who, you organized this reconstruction of Pearl Harbor. Why? Well, we've always been interested in modern drama. We were the first Time Lord Women's Guild to reform camp on Blood Island. And last year we did a reenactment of Nazi war atrocities. So this year we thought we'd do something in a lighter vein, you know. So you chose the Battle of Pearl Harbor? Yes, that's right, Squire, we did. Well, I can see you're all ready, so I will just wish you good luck in your latest venture. Ah, well, thank you very much, mate, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the world of history proudly presents the premiere of Twitch Time Lord Women's Guild's reenactment of Pearl Harbor. Dad, look who's come to see us. It's our kin. We are about bloody time, if you ask me. Aren't you pleased to see me, Father? Of course he's pleased to see you, kin. All right, woman, all right. I've got tongue in, Ed. I'll do talking. Blah. I like your fancy suit. Is that what they're wearing up in Yorkshire now? It's just an ordinary suit, Father. It's all I've got apart from the overalls. How do you like it down there in the mine, kin? Oh, it's not too bad, Mum. We're using some tungsten carbide drills for the preliminary coal phase operations. Oh, that sounds nice, dearie. Tungsten carbide drills? What the bloody hell is tungsten carbide drills? It's something they use in the coal mining, Father. Well, it's something they use in coal mining, Father. You bloody fancy talk since you left London. Not that again. He had a hard day, dear. His new play opens at the National Theatres tomorrow. Oh, that's good. Good? Good? What do you know about it? What do you know about getting up at five in the morning to fly to Paris, back for drinks at twelve, sweating the day through, press interviews, television interviews, then getting back here at ten to wrestle with the problem of a homosexual nymphomaniac drug addict involved in the ritual murder of a well-known Scottish footballer? That's a full working day, lad, and don't you forget it. Don't shout at the boy, father. Apstead wasn't good enough for you, was it? You had to go putzing off to Barnsley, you and your coal mining friends. Coal mining is a wonderful thing, father, but that's something you'll never understand. Just look at you. Oh, Ken, be careful. You know what he's like after a few novels. No, no, come on, lad, come on, out with it. What's wrong with me, eh, you tit? I'll tell you what's wrong with you. Your head is rattled with novels and poems. You come home each evening reeling in Chateau Le Tour. Don't, don't. And look what you've done to Mother. She's worn out with meeting film stars, attending premieres and attending gala luncheons. They're not wrong with gala luncheons, my lad. I've had more gala luncheons than you've had hot dinners. Oh, please, please. Ah! Oh, oh, no. Ah. oh no. What is it? It's his writer's cramp. You never told me about this. Uh, we don't like to bother you. I'm alright. I'm alright, woman. Just get him out of here. Oh, Ken, you better go. Alright, I'm going. After all we've done for him. One day, you'll realise there is more to life than culture. There's dirt, and smoke, and good honest grit. Ah, get out! Get out! Get out, you laborer! Hey, you know, mother, I think there's a play there. Get agent on phone. 
alive, I love my Jeff and I'm okay, I sleep all night and I work all day. He's a lumberjack, he's okay, he sits all night and he works all day. I cut down trees, I eat my lunch, I go to the life of a tree. On Wednesdays I go shopping and I put a scones for tea. He cuts down trees, he eats his lunch, he goes to the laboratory. On Wednesday he goes shopping and has buttered scones for tea. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. I cut down trees, I skip and jump, I like to press wildflowers. I put on women's clothing and I hang around in bars. He cuts down trees, he skips and jumps, he likes to press wildflowers. He puts on women's clothing and hangs around in bars. Well, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. I cut down trees, I wear high heels, suspend all sun no bra. I wish I'd been a girly, just like my dear papa. I cut down trees, I wear high heels, I sing in the land of stars. Oh, 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 I lost myself a bit there. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh dear, we're gonna go. Hello, Mr. Smythe. Are you the sole owner and proprietor of the Wizzo Chocolate Company? I am. Superintendent Mitloaf and I are from the IG Squad. We want to have a word of you about your box of chocolates entitled The Wizzo Quality Assortment. Ah, yes. If I may begin at the beginning. First, there is the Cherry Fondue. This is extremely nasty, and we can't possibly get you for that. Agreed. Next, we have number four, Crunchy Frog. Ah, ah, yes. Mm. Am I right in thinking there is a real frog in here? Uh, yes, a, a little one. What sort of frog? A dead frog. Is it cooked? No. What? A raw frog? We use only the finest baby frogs, do picked and flown from Iraq, cleansed in the finest quality spring water, lightly killed and then sealed in a succulent Swiss silky smooth triple cream chocolate envelope and lovingly frosted with glucose. Says maybe, but it is still a frog. Well, uh... Don't you even take the bones out? No, if we took the bones out, it wouldn't be crunchy, would it? Superintendent, me life at one of those. Excuse me a moment. It says Crunchy Frog quite clearly. Well, the superintendent thought that it was an almond or whirl. People won't expect there to be a frog in there. They're bound to think it's some sort of mock frog. Mock frog? We use no artificial preservatives or additives of any kind. Nevertheless, I must warn you in future, you should delete the words Crunchy Frog and replace them with the legend Crunchy Raw Boned Dead Frog if you want to avoid prosecution. What about our sales? I'm not interested in your sales. I have to protect the general public. Now, how about this one? Uh, was it a, Was it number five? Wasn't it number five? Ram's Bladder Cup? What kind of confectionery is this? We use only the choicest, chewiest chunks of Cornish ram's bladder, emptied, steamed, covered in sesame seeds and whipped in a fondue and garnished with lark's vomit. Lark's vomit? Correct. Well, it doesn't say anything like that here. Oh, oh yes it does, it does. On, on the bottom of the box after monosodium glucomate. Well, I hardly think this is good enough. I think it would be more appropriate if a border of a box wore a large red label that read, Warning Lark's Vomit. Well, our sales will plummet. Well, why don't you move into more conventional areas of confectionery, like praline or lime cream? It's a very popular flavour, from what I understand. I mean, look at this one. Cockroach Cluster, Anthrax Ripple. 
What's this one? Spring surprise? Ah, now that's our speciality. Covered in darkest, creamiest chocolate, just pop it in your mouth and still spikes spring out and plunge straight through both cheeks. Always the pleasure in that. If people place a notch chucky in their mouth, they don't want their cheeks pierced. And in any case, this is an, an adequate description of a sweetie. I still have to ask you to come to me to the station. It's a fair cop. Stop talking to the camera. Oh, sorry. If only the general public would take more care when buying its sweeties, it would reduce the numbers of hours lost to the nation, and they would spend less time having their stomachs pumped and sitting around public lavatories. Kira! Go! Go on! Hop it! We have a lot of trouble with the crafters. Two times worst. They all go mad. As soon as they've had their tea and they buy huge supplies of glue, PVC, sticky back plastic, and snacks. Wee oui, wee, oui, oui, but uh, of course, some Twitch con. All the big loose in there, especially Ali. If there is an art expedition nearby, we get seats ripped up in the bell and the halls. Dungeon and dragon tables broken, consoles smashed, that sort of thing. She used to be quite happy here, until she started on crochet, yeah. Now she can't do without it. 20 balls of wool a day, and if she don't get the wool, she gets violent. What can we do about it? This is not just arts and crafters town. There are other equally dangerous gangs such as the VTubers. I left my husband in his study to do some streaming, and when I came to give him his tea, he was gone. He was only on his second stream anniversary. And on the roads, too. Vicious gang. Hello, I wish to register a complaint. Hello, miss? What you mean, miss? I'm sorry, I have a cold. I wish to make a complaint. Sorry, we're closing for lunch. Never mind that, my lad. I wish to complain about this parrot which I purchased not half hour ago from this very boutique. Ah, yes, the, uh, the Norwegian blue. What's, uh, what's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it, my lad. He's dead. That's what's wrong with it. Oh, no, no. He's, uh, he's resting. Look, matey, I know a dead parrot when I see one, and I'm looking at one right now. No, 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 he's not dead. He's, uh, he's resting. Remarkable bird, the Norwegian blue. Beautiful plumage, eh? The plumage doesn't enter into it. It's stone dead. No, oh, no, no. It's, it's, it's just resting. All right, if he's resting, I'll wake him up. Hello, Mr. Polly Parrot. I've got a lovely fresh cuttlefish for you, if you show. Uh, here, he moved. Uh, uh, no, he didn't. That was you hitting the cage. I did not. Yes, you did. I'd never. I did not. Hello, Polly. Testy, 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 testy. This is your nine o'clock alarm call. Hello, Polly. <laughs> now, that's what I call a dead parrot. No, 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 it's, uh, it's stunned. Stunned? Yes, yes, you stunned it just as it was waking up. The Norwegian blue stun easily major. Now look, look here, mate. I've definitely had enough of this. That parrot is definitely deceased. And when I purchased it not half hour ago, you assured me that its total lack of movement was due to it being tired and shacked out following a prolonged squawk. But, well, it, it's, it's... Probably pining for the fjords. Pining for the fjords? What kind of talk is that? Look, why did it fall flat on its back the moment I got it home? The Norwegian blue prefers keeping on its back. It's a remarkable bird, beautiful plumage, eh? Look, I took the liberty of examining that parrot when I got it home, and I discovered that the only reason it had been sitting on its perch in the first place was that it had been nailed there. Well, of course it was nailed there, otherwise it would have muscled up to those bars, and with its beak it wouldn't have been well like boom. Voom? Make this bird wouldn't voom if you put four million volts through it. He's bleeding demise. No, oh, no, he's... he's pining. He's not pining, he's passed on. 
This parrot is no more. He has ceased to be. He's expired and gone to meet its maker. He's a stiff, bereft of life. He rests in pieces. If you hadn't nailed it to the perch, you'd be pushing up the daisies. His metabolic processes are now history. He's off the twig. He's kicked the bucket. He's shuffled off the mortal coil, run down the curtain, and joined the bleeding choir invisible. This is an ex-parrot. Well, I better replace it then. Uh, sorry, Gov. We're uh, we're all out of parrots. I see. I see. I get the picture. We got a slug. Pray, does it talk? Not really. No. Well, it's hardly a bloody replacement, then, is it? Look, tell you what, tell you what, uh, you can go to my brother in Bolton, and he'll replace the parrot for you. Bolton, eh? Very yep. well. This is Bolton, isn't it? Uh, no, it's Ipswich. That's in the city rail for you. Hello, I wish to complain, British Railways person. I don't have to do this job, you know. I beg your pardon? I'm a qualified brain surgeon. I only do this job because I like being my own boss. Excuse me, this is irrelevant, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's not easy to pad out these soul shows out to 150 lines, you know. But I wish to complain. I got on the Bolton train and found myself deposited here in Hipswich. No, this is Bolton. The pet shop man's brother... Is lying. Can't blame the British Rail for that. In that case, I shall return to the pet shop. I understand this is Bolton. Yeah? Well, you told me it was Ipswich. It was a pun. A pun? No, no, not a pun, not a pun. Uh, what's that thing that you read saying backwards as forwards? A palindrome? Yeah, yeah, that. It's not a palindrome. The palindrome of Bolton would be not lob. It didn't work. Fine, what do you want? I'm not prepared to pursue this line of inquiry with you any further. This whole thing's got rather silly. <laughs>